Hello everyone, welcome to a new video of Dr. Kat Concord. In this video, I'm going to talk about transform and conquer. This is a very important algorithmic strategy to convert a hard problem into a, an easier problem that can be solved more effectively or it can be solved more easily. Before we get into the detailed content, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Dr. Han Fan. I have been teaching for more than 10 years and I have been programming for nearly two decades. I love sharing my knowledge to the community. Thank you. So the definition of transform and conquer algorithms is that it aims to transform the problem into simpler problem that, be, that can be conquered more easily. The pro of this approach is that this is a potential way to solve complex problems that cannot be solved uh, easily directly. However, the con of this strategy is that not all problems can be transformed. If you stick around until the end of the video, I'm going to demonstrate some practical Python example to see what are the common approaches in transform and conquer so that you can understand this topic more deeply and you can apply it in your real world problems. So the three approaches that we have in transform and conquer are Instant simplification, it means I try to transform the original problem into a problem with some special property that makes it similar to solve. For example, I am gonna do some preparation steps before I actually run my new algorithms. Because of the preparation step, my problem has been simplified. The second approach, is the data representation chain. Transforming the original problem into a problem which use a different data structure that make it simpler to solve. Sometimes the way you store data will influence how you process and run algorithms on those data to solve the problems. By changing the way you store data, it may open up new ways that are simpler to solve. The third approach is the third approach in transform and conquer is that we try to reduce the problems um, using some of the known connection and they can be uh, a link to unknown problems or some mathematical equation that you can employ so that you can reduce your problem into a form that already has a solution. So by doing this reduction, you can indirectly solve your problem through solving the reduced problem. Thank you for staying up to this point of the video. In the next part of, the, of this video, I'm going to show you very practical Python example to demonstrate these approaches in transform and conquer algorithms. Make sure to like and subscribe to make it easier for you to see the next educational content videos from me. Thank you. So let's jump right into the first example, instant simplification. The problem we have here is searching for an element in an unsorted list. So it, the, the obvious approach that people may think is to do linear search. You will look through all the elements in your unsorted list and find the matching element. Obviously, the, the complexity of this approach is ON. However, if you perform this search over and over again, this 
ON will be costly because it's stacking up. So how can we improve this further? So let's try to use transform and conquer approach to solve this problem more efficiently. So assuming that you will do a lot of searching on this data set, what you can do to improve the search speed is to do the transformation of the problem from an unsorted list into a sorted list. So you're going to do a preparation step where you sort the list first. So you can sort the list using an efficient sorting algorithm, for example, Merck sort and quick sort. In my other videos in this channel, I already show you the Merck sort and quick sort in some um, in quite, quite, level, quite high level of details. So you can have a look at it as well. But uh, for the purpose of this video, Merck sort and quick sort are quite efficient. You can sort a list with the complexity of O n log n. And remember that if you aim to do a lot of searching, you only need to do this sorting once in a while or maybe one time at the beginning. And then you can do a lot of searching or querying uh, the sorted list. Obviously, the sorting process and log n is more expensive than the linear search O n that we saw before. However, remember that for that linear search, you do it again and again. However, for this sorting, you only do it once at the beginning. After the list becomes sorted, you can perform binary search, as I, as I saw here in the function in the Python function that I uh, have written here. You can perform binary search on the sorted list by dividing the search space by half every iteration in the while loop. I managed to perform the binary search with the complexity of O log n, which is much faster than O n. As you can see over here, if you do a lot of searching on this list, it is better to transform the problem by doing some pre-step preparation. In this case, we're going to do the sorting of the list, and then we can do the searching again and again and again with much better complexity. O log n is much better than O n. Okay, thank you for sticking around. There are two more examples. Let's get right to that. Example number two, I will uh, show an example to show that uh, for transform and conquer, sometimes it's important to change the way you store the data. And by doing that, you can improve the efficiency or you can turn a very hard problem into a simpler problem because the way we represent the data is more convenient. Okay, so the problem here is finding common elements between two input lists. If you uh, write a simple algorithm for this two lists without doing anything, you can write a nested loops, one for loop, go through all the elements of the first list, and then one inner loops going through all the elements of the second list. For each element in the first list, you compare to all the elements in the second list. And if they match, you can put them into your result list and keep doing that. And the complexity of this algorithm is O m times n, where m is the number of elements of the first list and n is the number of elements of the second list. So it's a uh, second, it's uh, roughly equivalent to ON square uh, polynomial time. Let's see how can we improve it further. Yes, we can improve this algorithm to turn it into a much faster algorithm by transforming the way we store one of the list. So the transformation step here is to change the data representation of one list into a set and then iterate through the other list to check for the common elements of each of the element and the set. Please note that for those of you who don't know, Python use hash table for set implementation. So the looking up of an element in a hash table or a set is 01. If the size of the hash table is 
good and there's not uh, a lot of overlapping elements, then ideally the looping up of the element step is a one instant. So, but it's costly to transform a list into a set as well. And that will uh, basically injecting elements in the list into a hash table or a set in this case is OM and then iterating through the other list, each element of the other list gonna be ON because uh, the other list has N elements, but checking for each of the element in the other list, checking whether there's a matching of that element in the set will only cost you a one. So overall the time complexity for the new algorithm after the transformation is OM plus N. So this is roughly equivalent to ON complexity. So we have managed to reduce the complexity from um, polynomial time ON squared to a very much faster algorithm that only costs you ON linear time. So this is the Python code that demonstrating the idea. So this is converting from the list to the set. And that's called you OM. And this is looping through the other list and then checking um, if the item is in the set or not. This if item in set one here only cost you a, a one in each uh, run. Very efficient because set in Python is implemented as a hash table. Okay, the final example, problem reduction. Sometimes you have some known uh, problem that you know how to solve. If you can find the reduction from your hard problem into that easier and known problem, you can um, solve the problem indirectly. Sometimes the reduction can be just a mathematical equation that you can use. If someone or yourself have managed to mathematically prove an equation or a formula that you can use, go ahead, because that saves you a lot of time, like in this example. In this example, um, I'm trying to find the sum of the first and natural numbers. The simple approach is to write one loop going through all the natural numbers up to n and sum them together. The time complexity of this approach is on. However, mathematically, we know that the sum of the first n integral is equivalent to n times n plus one divided by two. So this can be proved mathematically using uh, induction. Because this, because we know this math uh, formula, we can just apply it directly in our function over here. Instead of writing a loop to go through all the natural number up to n, I just simply plug the number n into this uh, formula and calculate the out outcome. And the complexity, the time complexity of this is just a one because just one calculation, and it's not. Uh, the number of steps of execution is not dependent on input n anymore. So sometimes math, math is very important for approximation or for having some instant solution for some um, more complex problem. So this is the third way we can do for transform and conquer strategy to deal with harder problem to reduce it into an easier problem. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Please make sure to like and subscribe to make it easier for you to see the next video from me. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being part of the Card Can Code community. I'm happy to share my knowledge uh, to everyone so that we all grow together. Thank you again. Take care. See you in the next video. Goodbye.